fluffy bunnies. It's one type of not just heathen, but pagan that you'll encounter. It's a lot of uh, magical thinking, very UPG heavy, if you're unaware. UPG is unverifiable personal gnosis. And it's a way for people to fill in the gaps, and it can be very hypothetical, lack a lot of proof. Some folks will just straight up make up things. It's, it's just something to kind of watch out for. It's not to say that UPG is bad necessarily. As I went over in my historical accuracy video, there is some need for filling in the gaps. And obviously some of us are very heavy on recreating historical heathenry as opposed to any kind of modern incarnation. Some of which go so far as to become some kind of Viking Amish. <laughs> Whatever blows your hole, right? And of course there's negatives to that as well. But again, I go over a lot of that in my, my historical accuracy video. So the fluffy bunny types are you know, your Wicca true, which I talked a little bit about in my types of Norse paganism video. These folks that lean more toward inference and kind of a hippy dippy expression, really. And if that's you, that's fine. You know, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. But I would say that any mentality, religious or otherwise, needs to be tempered with logic and understanding. We basically have, and this is kind of a realization I've, I've recently come to, is that we basically have an emotional mind and a logical mind. And this is kind of my personal UPG, uh, but I think, I think it fits. Now, the emotional mind, it wants to believe in magical thinking. It wants to put labels on the patterns that we see naturally as human beings. Um, it wants to believe in literal gods, sit on their thrones in Asgard and, and watch over the, the little folks. But then the logical mind, uh, that's what defines things into archetypes, which we'll go over, obviously, in the archetype video, um, which is going to be a series of videos, but and I, I swear I'm going to do that soon. <laughs> Just got to find the time. It defines them into archetypes that sees the world as numbers and quantifiable realities, uh, requires proof for things. The problem really comes in when you want to apply logic to the emotional. Now, it's not necessarily bad. Obviously, science fiction, um, fantasy, these things can lead to innovations and furthering human technology and experience. These things can be very positive, but you have to have that disconnect. You have to realize that believing in gods, literal gods, is something that you want. That is an emotional want. I want to believe that there are actual beings that exist in a parallel dimension. I want to believe that that dimension is influenced by our thoughts and feelings and actions, and my observations have shown that to me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's true, and I have no proof of that. And those actually are my, my emotional beliefs. I do on the emotional level believe in actual deities and I do on the emotional level believe that our intentions and who we are as, as people can influence the world around us. For example, I tend to be very calm and very collected most of the time and at work security, I you know, never, almost never deal with anything. Whereas I've had guards that were very hyped up and very confrontational. And because of that energy, that who they are, they seem to bring it towards them. So through my pattern recognition, my natural human pattern recognition, I infer that their beliefs or that their, that their essence, that energy, that who they are influences the world around them. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's true though. And on the logical side, I can't prove that that's true. On the logical side, it seems like we as people assume those patterns. You know, just because I hit every single red light on my way to work when I'm late feels like Loki fucking with me doesn't necessarily mean that Loki is fucking with me. But it does feel that way, right? And we don't notice the times that we're running late and we hit green lights. Because for some reason, and it's probably to do with survival, people don't 
necessarily focus on the positive a lot. So why have I called this video Quantum bu <laughs> Fuzzy Bunnies? Quantum Fuzzy Bunnies. Well, the word quantum gets thrown around a lot in this sense. It's people applying the logical to the emotional. Essentially what it is is the God of the Gaps fallacy. If you're un unfamiliar, that is basically, we can't explain this, therefore God. Or gods, or Mariska Hargate. <laughs> Mariska Hargate. Mariska Hargate. <laughs> Insert whatever. So because of the pop science understanding of quantum physics, we have inferred that cer certain things about it, there, there are certain like colloquial ideas about quantum physics that people think. Uh, a big popular one is that um, just by observing something, it alters the thing. So literally because like it knows that you're looking at it and it can feel your mind, that particle is altered when that's not true at all. The reality is that there is a medium between you and the thing you're observing. Usually light and photons are on a quantum level that and something that small will also affect something that small. So the reality is it's not your psychic presence, it's actually the methodology of looking at the thing. And quantum comes from quantus, which means how little, and it's just the smallest form of existence, really. Obviously smaller than a cell, smaller than a particle, they've even gone smaller than atoms. Now I believe uh, the current smallest form we know about is quarks. And I'm not sure if they've been observed. I know there's a lot of, with, with quantum physics specifically, obviously I'm not a scientist, I'm just an armchair autodidact. And from my understanding, a lot of quantum physics is uh, theories based on um, observations around something. Uh, for example, like before we actually observed a black hole, we believed that black holes existed because of gravitational anomalies that we couldn't explain. Something was drawing it into that spot, we didn't actually see it, therefore we theorized that black holes existed, uh, which obviously now we, we have a picture of one, which was absolutely amazing how they got it. It was like multiple cameras and I mean, just incredible. But we don't know anything in infinite detail. There's a lot with quantum physics that puts a question mark on things. And some of it's like really hard to understand. I watched a few videos before making this and a lot of it goes over my head. <laughs> so we as a species also have a tendency to, to infer certain things. There's actually something called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is good to be aware of, in that we tend not to see anybody anybody above our intelligence level. And when I go into other, uh, which is probably going to be my next video, I'm going to go into how we should understand human nature better in order to direct human nature. And that's definitely true of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean I should infer certain things. Um, I mean, that's something that's popular with the flat earthers. They tend to be like, I observe the world being flat, therefore it's flat, even though we literally have pictures of the world being round. And there's also a, in the modern time, a lot of institutions have failed us. You know, we had the 2008 crisis. Um, I mean, that's just one of the more recent ones. We have a lot of uh, systems in place that fail us, you know, depending on your political side of the aisle. You might assume it's this, that, or the other. You might see different things, but we tend to be very disenfranchised with these institutions and then we think, well, what are they hiding from us? And who knows? Uh, I mean, there are certain conspiracy theories that have proven true. So, you know, I'm not saying don't question things. I'm, I mean, you should question everything, which is actually one of the purposes of this video. That being said, you know, you have to differentiate your emotional wants and that emotional agenda and your logical mind and what you can not only prove but what can be replicated as proof uh, and that's the scientific method really a lot of like pop science is like one week chocolate makes you thin and the next week it gives you the cancers we tend to have a disbelief in science because of that in reality, science is literally just the questioning and attempt to understand things through replication of that 
proof, replication of those experiments, uh, which doesn't always work for everything, but it's the best we got. <laughs> and I know, from my experience at least, growing up in school, things were taught to me as though they were solid facts. They were not taught as theories um, that can be altered, like even history. You know, we're taught, oh, this certain narrative is exactly what happened because they're testing you on those exact facts, when in reality, new archaeological things are coming up all the time. You know, new digs, new findings, new theories. There's actually one guy that I really like, John Anthony West. Him and certain people around him have a lot of really interesting theories about ancient Egypt. And I think he's got a fairly sound scientific mind. He admits that he's not a scientist or anything, but I'll actually throw a link to... I'll see if I can find some videos for him, just because it's like, super interesting. Uh, like water erosion on the Sphinx and stuff. But he's got theories that about Egypt that don't fit the current model that, who knows, maybe in 10 years, or 20 years, or 30 years, those will be accepted. According to him, the Egyptian government is not so happy about the theories, and they want a certain narrative. So it's kind of a whole thing. But that's how we should see things. We should not see things as solid fact. Everything is theory. The fact that we exist is theory. You know, we might be in a larger matrix. I could be a head in a jar somewhere, and you could also be a head in a jar, and this could just be a projection. We don't know. Um, however, we have no proof that we are. So the only proof we have is the shared experience. You know, I'm recording on my phone right now, and you're watching me on the YouTubes, and we both kind of understand that and that reality. So that's what we see reality as. And that's what science is, and that's what quantum physics is, and... Anything else you want to call quantum for that matter? It's evidence to explain how reality works. It's replicatable proof, the logic side, versus speculation, the emotional side. And sometimes speculation comes before logic, but we need proof. Like in my job, I don't immediately see a transient and a homeless person and think that person's bad. I have to see them do something bad in order for me to prove that they did something bad, especially as a security guard, because I don't have the protections of law enforcement. So in summary, understand that you have an emotional mind and a logical mind, and that, doing this, but actually the left-right dichotomy is also wrong, by the way. And understand that if something is not provable and replicatable, then it is not solid fact. Uh, some Christians do a lot. They're huge fans of that. God of the Gaps fallacy and understand that on an emotional level that's where you believe in the gods that's where you have that magical thinking that's where you have that speculation that's where you start seeing the triangles and the pizza they're the illuminati <laughs> but at the same time our emotions are also what bind us uh, our emotions are also what make us human and that shouldn't be ignored either um, actually something that i realized when my a grandfather on my dad's side passed away because before that I didn't think emotions had a purpose and I thought that they were very very useless and made illogical decisions and then because I was losing my grandfather I realized that emotions were something that bonded us together so it's important to have emotions and it's important important to have that emotional mind but at the same time, we also have to understand our human nature, and we also have to study ourselves in order to direct that human nature, which, again, I'll go over more when I do my other video. The usual spiel. Uh, Patreon, subscribe star all down there. Teespring and Redbubble's down there. Actually, recently had a copyright claim against a hand drawing I've done on Redbubble so that hopefully in like a week or so we'll be making a positive video on that. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't posted in a little bit. We had a power outage here. Um, I'll actually throw up some footage that I took of that um, while I was driving around. It was pretty dark. Uh, and the footage I took is actually just before the power came on. I think it was about like 30 minutes or so. Um, started to see some of the places actually had, had juice. And then I got to work and like 20 minutes later the, the power popped on. Uh, so that's you know, one of the things that held me back. Um, the other thing is I 
have a new job now. I still work at the um, the one place, but uh, I'm now doing armed security. It's uh, it's a new step for me. Um, so my schedule has been a little harder to film. Um, it's a little more imperative that I get that uh, um, studio set up in our spare bedroom, which will happen. I swear. Skull. We're